Ryan here with Dark Rangers Inc. And today I'm gonna show you how to dramatically speed up the worst part of image processing, the stack, while also maintaining the quality that you're used to, if not even elevating it a little bit. And the best part is it couldn't be easier. So stay tuned. If you guys saw my 2024 processing tutorial, I said this year I'm really gonna keep it true to what I'm actually using. And for the past several months, I've been using a little known gem in the astrophotography community known as Astro Pixel Processor. Now to go above and beyond for you guys and make sure I got the best results for the review, I went ahead and reached out to the creator of the program, a gentleman by the name of Mabula, and we did a two and a half hour Zoom call where we went through all of the features up into even the beginning portions of the processing because this program is a full start to finish processing suite. Now, if you're like me, when you hear about a new program, your head starts to spin and you're like, man, I just learned that last one. The best part is with all of the smart and automatic features, if you want to, you can literally just do this by loading up your images and hit calibrate. And for 99% of you, it will give you amazing results. You don't have to sacrifice any quality and it's actually easier and dramatically faster than most of the other programs you guys are currently using. If you are a little more hands-on and you wanna go step by step, you can. Maybe you just wanna do the first couple steps and then jump ahead to calibrate, you can do that as well. You can see the impact that your calibration frames and other steps are having on the image before they are integrated. And that way you can help diagnose any potential issues. There are some features that are unique to this stacking software that aren't in others. And some of the things that you can do in terms of image processing are really cool and unique. If you stay all the way till the end, End. I will go over a couple of those and if there are enough comments and requests for a part two I will set up another call and go through the entire image processing session and then share that with you guys as well I'll probably never do all of my processing in one program to be fair But if I can do some of those easy steps up front and make them quicker and more automated So I can get to the part that I really like those fine-tune adjustments at the end Then I definitely want to explore that and the best part is there is a third 30 day free trial. And if you use the link in the description, you will get a discount. I wanted to make sure I secured that so that you get a benefit for being a part of the Dark Rangers Inc. community. And so with that, let's jump in and see what this thing can do. All right, guys, here we are in APP, and I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to actually use this software. So I've already loaded the calibration frames, but I saved the lights just so I could show you how to do that. The first thing that you can do is click on this little gray icon here and actually set the folder that you wanna pull everything from, which I already have. You just navigate through like you would anywhere else, and then hit open. Now I'm gonna go to my light frames, and I'm gonna load all of these but these three and I'll show you why in a second. So I'm gonna just shift click all of them. And now because I used a filter wheel and it puts the filter title in the fits header, I don't need to tell it which one is which. So I can just load them all at once just like I do in WBPP and hit okay. Now, if you're somebody that uses maybe a color camera or something like that, and you don't have a filter wheel, you can also go into lights. And then I have these three that are named slot zero to illustrate how to do that. So I'm gonna open it and I'm gonna add those to the HA cause that's what they are and hit okay. And you can manually tell the system which ones are from this filter versus that. And then make sure you do the same on the flats. So that way it matches them up for calibration and it makes life really easy. You can go through and double click on any of the photos like you can anywhere else and get a preview. I have not only the image here, I can zoom in and out but then you also have all the metadata over here. Anytime you run any analysis, it's gonna show up here. You can just hit this button to showcase that. And you just do the same thing for each one of your calibration frames and they'll go right there. And then basically what's really nice about this is you don't have to find any of the tools. You don't need to say, okay, I wanna analyze it. Do I need to find this subframe selector tool? And how do I load all my images? Have to load them up in a different area. Once you load everything, you can do all the analysis and all you have to do is follow this one through six step here on the left. Now, if you want to, and what I'd recommend for 99% of you, once you load it, just go to step six, tell it what drizzle size you wanna use. In this case, I'm gonna use 2.0 and hit integrate. 
and it's gonna do a great job. And the nice thing is at the very end, it will give you a readout of all of the different parameters and criteria that it looks at. And you can quickly just right click and delete one of the images and then restack it because it does stack so quick. And then that way you never have to really do any pre analyzation of your images. You can also just go ahead and tell it, hey, uh, just keep the top, you know, 90% or 80%, whatever that is over here. And it will automatically take the worst images and just get rid of them. But if we go back to step one where we load everything, we can tell it whether we wanna do uh, multi-channel processing, which we are, and then you can even do multi-session. So if you want to pull in files that you'd already stacked from before, maybe you have calibration files that are hanging out in a different session, you can bring those into a current session, and that way you don't have to keep loading the same master darks and things like that. So you, you have the capability of doing all that. And then if you want to delete all the files, you just click on all and then hit clean. Obviously, we're not going to do that. We want all to show. If you do this, then none of them are going to be showing. So if we go to step two, which is calibrate, it already has Windsorize rejection in there. In WBPP, I had to change mine to Windsorize Sigma clipping, and then I set mine to two and a half and five, but three and six works great. Under integrate, I just do automatic. Everything automatic, you can create a rejection map to use for uh, future use. If you are using some of these files over and over again, like a master dark, for example, you can go ahead and have it save that for you, which is really nice. And then some um, cosmetic correction. You can do a uh, hot pixel, which I am going to keep cold column and hot column. And then you can also tell it to create 32-bit masters, have separate darks with different uh, exposure times, so that way it separates those out. Um, and then you can create, obviously, master bias, dark, flats, all of those things. And then you can scale your master dark and flat. In order to do that, let's say you have five-minute exposures, but you only have three-minute darks. If you give it a bias and a three-minute dark, it will scale up knowing basically the zero point and the three minute point, it will scale up in equivalent five minute dark. Now, obviously you always wanna take the time to do that, but if you are in a rush and you just wanna see what you got, you can scale it. Obviously I don't have that checked, so I don't need to worry about that. You can set the save directory and then you can even align them all up so that my SHO channels when I come out of this will automatically be aligned. Of course, when we go into load, you can name everything. So this is the cone nebula, I forgot to mention, um, in SHO. And then what you do is go to three and then basically start doing your analysis. So the nice thing is, is again, I don't have to go searching for this tool. I can just hit analyze stars. All right, as you can see, the star analysis is all done and it not only shows us the star density and number, the full width half maximum and the star shape or basically the eccentricity, how round it is, but then it gives it an overall quality score. Now, in this case, because we've only got star metrics, it's going to closely follow the other scores that we see, but then as we get further along in the process and it analyzes things like signal to noise and other issues like that, it will start to give us an overall score that does vary from some of the individual metrics. But since this is only an overall score and we've only looked at star quality, obviously it's going to follow that same curve pretty closely. So going into step four, We've got register, and basically that's just where we line everything up correctly so that all of the files are kind of facing the same direction and will stack appropriately. Not a lot to really do here. You can you know, change some basic settings around the camera distortion, things like that, but you're probably not gonna mess with these too often. You can change the rotation, so if you want it to come out in a different direction or rotate it you know, 90 degrees in, in one way or the other, I would recommend just stacking that and doing that afterwards it's going to be a lot easier and then this is the interpolation method as you can see there are several to choose from Mabula recommended just sticking with the standard settings for now you can also save the registered frames if you want so if you do want to have a separate file of those I tend not to it just starts to really add up and eat a lot of your hard drive space and so we have the option to not obviously do that and then moving into step five we have normalize which is just trying to get everything to look as even 
and equal as possible so we don't have to do as much background extraction and things like that. So normalizing is just helping everything to look good, especially in the background. We have several different modes. You can go regular and advanced and then different methods. Um, again, the standard settings are likely going to give you the best overall results. And then you can choose to neutralize the background or not. I'm going to leave it clicked. And then there are different frame scales. I'm going to leave mine at 1.0. And again, you can choose to save these or not. I am not going to. And then finally, we have integrate. And this is probably where if you are going to make changes in terms of selection, this would likely be where it is. Because I see most of the data is kind of all in a similar range um, with only a few outliers down here at the bottom, um, basically below this kind of 0.4 line, I'm going to have it choose the top 90%. And so basically it will get rid of kind of these outliers down in this range and then leave everything else. Actually, we'll maybe just have it get rid of like 10. So the top 94, that should be enough to kind of get rid of um, all of those. And then we'll leave the rest. We can weight it in different ways. So if we want to look at just signal to noise ratio or noise, star density, star shape, however we want to determine the best way to weight the images so that when they are integrated, we use uh, uh, this metric in order to determine how much we're going to weight that image in the stack versus another metric, which if it scores lower, it's not going to bear as much weight into the overall stacked image. We're going to leave it at quality, which is a combination of all the different scores. And we will see what all of those scores are at the end. We also have MBB, which is something that is kind of unique to Astro Pixel Processor, which is multi-band blending. And basically what this is going to do is allow for that fringe area around the outside where we have stacking artifacts. It does a really nice job kind of smoothing that out and allowing you to use more, if not all of that space. Now, the worse your rotation is, the higher the percentage. I'm just going to leave mine probably, I'm going to back it down to about 3% because I know my rotation should be pretty decent. And then you can create a drizzle map for MBB and then create a rejection map as well. So you can see what exactly it did reject. Personally, I'm not really interested in seeing it as long as I know it's doing it. I'm good to go there. And then all we have to do is set the save directory. I'm going to have it be right in here where I am pulling the files from. And then we just hit integrate. And again, we could have just gone ahead and done that from the beginning. And then the last thing it's going to ask us before we integrate is do we want to run local normalization correction again? We did normalization earlier on and it's asking do we want to run one final pass? And it gives us different degree options and then numbers of iterations. So one in three would be the least amount. I will go ahead and check yes. That's just what I've typically done. And then if you didn't actually add a name at this point, you can do it again here. So I'm going to name it the Cone Nebula. It's going to go ahead and hammer this out. All right, guys, the stack is done. Sorry, my screen recorder blipped out there. I wanted to actually have it on the whole time so I could just do like a fast forward through it and show you guys. It took about four or five minutes and I did the same stack in WBPP yesterday before adding another night to the cone. It was only another couple hours or so, but it took about 42 minutes yesterday. And so with adding a little bit more data, it only took about four to five-ish. And that's pretty standard. I'd say it's about a 10 to one ratio on average. So anything that would take me X number of time, I can divide it by 10 and that's how much faster it will be in APP. And so let's just dive right in. So as you can see, we've got our HA master here on the left. I'm going to kind of minimize that because I want to show you this graph. So remember earlier we had uh, just the star stats, but now we've got so many others. We've got signal to noise, noise, we've got sky background, dispersion, all of these other things, and now a new updated quality score. So again, if you're like, well, which one's the most important? I see all these stats. It does all of the thinking for you. As you can see here, here. It's kind of in the middle of some of these. We have some that are worse, some that are better. It's kind of in the middle over here. It seems to prioritize some of them uh, heavier. And so if there were some bad outliers, let's say like in the 0 0.2 or 0 0.1 range, I could just go in and then right click and remove that. And then I could just restack it because it only takes a few minutes. So maybe there's like three or four bad outliers that were impacting it. Boom, just get rid of it right away. And then I'm ready to go. So guys, I just love the way this works. I don't have any affiliation with Mabula. You know, he's really nice that he took a call with me. I've just been using this for a while. And after he showed me not only these tools, but the processing tools, which again, comment if you want to see a follow-up video. I'm even more excited now. Um, and really quickly, just some of those, after you go through the six steps, 
you have tools here you have all of your stretching contrast saturation highlights all that over here but then over here we have a whole set of really nice automated tools which i absolutely love we've got remove light pollution calibrate background hsl select colors but one really nice thing is this combined rgb that he showed me with the fact that there's four different sho hubble palettes so the first one is just your standard and then four is an ha sho so it uses the ha as a luminance and it really made his data pop and then two and three are actually just different blends so instead of just a straight up sho they blend some of the uh, different channels together for rg and b and it gives a much more aesthetic look and it gets you to where you want to be faster so not only do they have that for sho they've got hso they've got lrgb harrgb lharrgb and then two hoos so you can see there's so much different stuff even lrgb sho so many different options for palettes and it's literally just as simple as doing a drop down menu so he showed me a few of those just the sho and the hubble palette 4 with the ha integration just looked awesome it really made it pop and then all of these other automated tools so Excited to show you guys that if you want to see it. But in the meantime, like I said, free trial for 30 days. Check it out. Uh, you can't really go wrong if you like it um, and it saves you a lot of time. Then, you know, it's up to you. Thank you guys so much. Nina Part 2 is coming, waiting on a couple pieces of equipment. I'm still going to show you guys how to use the AM5 mount because um, I know a lot of you have that. But might have a new surprise for you guys uh, that we can showcase uh, and allow us to maybe have a little bit better luck with some larger scopes in the future. So look forward to that. And guys, as always, until the next one, cheers, guys. <laughs>